You're such a little girl, oh, my little bazooka. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so in this video, we are going to cover framing our bump outs. Um, we are particularly thinking about a bump out area uh, by our bed and also in our shower, but might think about some other areas as well. And really, uh, this is coming from some comments to maximize as much storage as we can in the van. Um, and also for the bed area, we are sleeping with lies across the van. So we wanna make sure that this guy right here has enough space to sleep and doesn't have to be in a fetal position every day. <laughs> It'd be nice to be able to stretch out a little bit. Um, Not have her head right up against yeah, the exactly, yeah. edge of the van. Yeah, point my toes a little bit. So we're gonna see how it goes. You'll see it in this video. Yep, let's do it. Time to crunch. Time to crunch. Right, Bailey? Let's go. Time to sleep, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Step into the shower. Our little shower head situation. Um, we're thinking this spot right here for the bump out makes sense, right? You can just easily grab your bottle, shampoo, whatever. So yeah, I think this spot for the shower bump out looks good. Nice, yeah. boss approves. Good job, Bailey. <laughs> good job. Look at the little snoop. And here's a close up of this box. Let's get this tape out of here. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot to consider, but you could see like here, and here, got pocket holes, there's brad nails holding the backing in. Uh, in hindsight, I should have just taken the back all the way out, so that that's like the complete back face. So it's not perfect, obviously it's going to be sealed, we'll probably add some sort of sealant in the corners, and then for shower builds there's usually some sort of... Uh, like waterproof film or sticker that you add everywhere so that water can't get out. I got the box up with the insulation behind it. It's gonna be way easier to add the insulation now than it is to do it after this is installed and mounted. So yeah, I got the clamps going. It's nice and square where I want it to be square. And then this piece, we'll just drop it down a little bit so it's level. So I got these uh, number eight Phillips screw. They're like one and a half inches long. Just going to use these to go through my framing into the box. I got a few screws going in. So my next steps, which I'll do just do off camera, is adding another stud here. So that this is nice and flush, and then I gotta screw in the rest down here, and then on the framing piece that I had there. Toodaloo! All right, so we're working on the bump outs for our bed. Uh, it's pretty challenging just cause there's a lot of curves and weird contours working in a van. It's not just like a house. Uh, but what I've done so far is just measured a piece of plywood and cut it down to the size and now I'm just test fitting it but I think uh, you know I think this piece of wood's 43 and a half inches wide by 33 or so inches tall um, and this kind of represents like the max dimensions of our uh, bump out building this bump out you know our pieces of you know the actual bump outs will be on top of the piece of wood um, or the piece of plywood backing here um, and that's going to help us sit you know flush down here with our bench um, and so that way we don't have like a weird kind of edge poking up somewhere and yeah so we're test fit right now we got to trim it down some more and we'll go from there so I trimmed off and half inch from the height of our piece of plywood for our bump out. Nice. We're just gonna give it another test fit. Hopefully, this is like the perfect dimensions. Okay. Oh yeah. Let me get my little shim under here. Nice, look at that. Looks pretty good. So I guess the final dimensions, and I could try to test fit on our other wall too, just to make sure. 
but it's 32 and three quarters tall and 43 inches wide. Is that a question? <laughs> 43 inches wide, I think. Now that's a statement. <laughs> Looks good. And cut. Hey, baby. Tired. Liana is hard at work sanding. She says she likes it. Isn't that crazy? It's very smooth, it's satisfying. Feels good. Go sanding. All right, so for our bump outs, we wanted to add a little bit of support to them. So I got these two by twos. Obviously the two by twos are square and there's this slight awkward angle here. I think it's around 45 degrees or so. So what I need to do is cut out a slight angle on our piece of wood. You can see I kind of did it on this piece already. Um, so cut out a slight angle just so that this sits nice and flush um, and level. And so we'll take it over to the bench and proceed. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Welcome to the Jank Factory. I got my clamping guide. I got my circular saw at a 45 degree angle. Got various clamps and the bench dogs to help hold everything in place. So I just want to trim off a 45 degree angle about one or a half an inch or so. There's our cut. Nice. Nice little angle. Mm. It does smell good. But yeah, I stopped right here just because we didn't need it to go all the way out that way. I previously marked that. So. so the cut turned out pretty good. I'm just gonna test fit it into my little whatchamacallit here. Do my tape? No. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Bailey, are you giving kisses? She's like, it tastes so good, Dad. Oh, Bailey, Bailey, you like the bump outs? That's going to be your cozy hangout spot, huh? Oh, my goodness. Should I perch her up there? Oh, no. There you go. Good Whoa. girl. You get the waggy butt. Bailey, yay. You're such a good girl. <laughs> My little bazooka. So with this seated, I'm gonna fine tune it so that it's at the height that we're looking for. So we're looking for 24. Luckily I have these clamps which I can just help me get to the exact level I need it to be at. Double check, 24, 24. So with everything pretty good, I'm just going to take my number 10 self tappers and screw them into the wood. Okay, now I can remove my clamps. <laughs> I did it the fast way. And there we go. Now. So just be able to post up there. So yeah, now our bump out will fit perfectly over this ledge. So back to framing the bump out. Uh, I think my plan right now is just to build the box, see how it fits, and then take off some, uh, some of the depth using a router. Um, so since I don't exactly know the depth that I need it to be, at the end, I'm just kind of skewing my pocket holes to one side so that uh, even if I need to trim off some from here, it's not gonna, you know, cut into a screw or a pocket hole screw. Um, and then that should allow us to just run over it with a router, flush cut, and 
and yeah, so I'm gonna build this box. Hopefully this is the ideal way to do it, and then we'll fit it. All right, I finished the pocket holes, but as you could see, I kind of just didn't think about it, and I realized it after the fact, but I didn't need to pocket hole both sides of the junctions where the two joints meet. I should have only pocket holed, say for example, this piece and that piece. So my plan is now, um, instead of having the pocket holes all kind of in the same area, I'm just going to flip this one essentially upside down so that the pocket holes are offset. And I think that's pretty much just for structuralness. I think it'll help with some of the strength because I think that at this point if I were to pocket hole basically into here, it'd be weaker than if I pocket holed like somewhere here. So it's not going to be load bearing so it doesn't really matter that much but kind of just blanked on it and have to figure out a way to resolve it. So uh, now that these are done, I'm going to pocket hole um, going this way on these pieces. Same thing with all of them this time. Um, and that's going to basically join the backing to this framing bits. So we'll get that done. Then we can try to screw them all together, get it on the backboard, and then hopefully try to fit it in. All right, y'all. I just finished the pocket holes for all of our bump out framing pieces. Here is the system going on, right? So I got pocket holes going perpendicular, going downwards, right? So the bottom is where our, our backing is, so that's half inch ply. And then again, since I just blindly pocket hold both corners where they join, I flipped one upside down so that hopefully it provides a little more structure. But basically, from here, I'm gonna join these two pieces of wood. Same thing for all corners. And then from here, all these pocket holes going down joins the back end. All right, sunset's coming, but I got the box done. I'm pretty happy with how it came out so far. Pretty square, honestly, more square than I thought it was gonna be. Happy about that. Got all my pocket holes and screws going all the way around. Again, we're just gonna ignore these holes on the long bits. But it's looking pretty good. So, I think we're gonna call it for the night. Tomorrow, we'll get some good fitment going in. And then we'll repeat the process for the next one. Got Liana on the pocket holes. She did these guys already. Oh, look how artsy that is. Liana's doing some good sanding. This is for all of the pocket holes she just made. She's sanding the finished side of those pieces, which are the framing for the bump out. Good morning, just another day in paradise. So I'm working on the van this fine morning. Bailey is sitting in her chair. Liana is going to the grocery store. Looks like she actually just got back from the grocery store. Oh, and Bailey realized that mom just got back from the grocery store. Let's see what she does. Don't jump, Bailey. Hey, wait, don't jump. It had kimbops. Oh, the kimbops. We finally get to try it. And I was gonna grab like a bunch and it was like live in two per household. <laughs> so they actually like ration it. So now we have lunch. Yep. All right, pardon that little distraction. So yeah, we built the bump outs last night and now I'm test fitting them. Um, both bump outs are identical. So now my goal is to make sure that they're aligned perfectly across from each other. 
So I've been taking various measurements, like from this D pillar to the box. Same thing on this side. Um, and now my goal is to get them aligned. So based on the measurements that I've taken, I didn't make the framing perfectly symmetrical on this side and that side. So I do need to take off just this piece. Uh, I'll take it off from the wall. And I got to trim pretty much, what is this, like a quarter of an inch or so, half an inch here, going straight up, um, just so that this box can fit into here perfectly. Good job, Rihanna. Our strategy with insulating the bump outs, we are stapling, or attempting to staple, there we go, um, staple a bat of Havelock wool behind our bump outs and then we'll put it up in here. Um, we just found that it's easier to, I don't know, attach it when it's out versus we were at first we we're trying to like shove wool behind the box right there so this is a lot easier and then stapling in a few spots make sure that it'll stay up and then once it's in there it'll be tucked in pretty nicely so Ooh. all right important update we just got wing stop delivered yes, <laughs> uh, we watched hot ones last night and we're excited to have wings <laughs> But the last dab. Yes, but that's our reward after we get this bump out installed. All right, so walking you through our wing stop order, we got lemon pepper, classic hot, got some seasoned fries and things too, and then we got barbecue and atomic. So we'll see how that goes. Mm. All right, moment of truth. How far is it across? Good question. <laughs> like, did this actually help? <laughs> so, yeah, this isn't going to be very scientific here at this point. But, like, approximately. So, that right there is pretty much exactly six feet. Okay, Maybe so it like might be a little under then. Yeah, six feet. And so yeah, part of the challenge that we're gonna have to figure out how to deal with is making sure that everything's like directly pointed at each other. So yeah, this is basically six feet. How tall are you? Seven foot thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the people the truth. Fine, six foot thirteen. Five foot eight. Eight. Five eight. You're gonna fit. Eighteen. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, so I'll fit, which is good. So I was continuing the framing on the bump outs. So now that our boxes are built, I've been adding additional framing just to stabilize it. Um, and so yeah, I got some self tappers on this piece with some pocket holes so that we can screw into it from here. So we won't have any screw holes here. But as far as the bottom goes, we're just gonna be using some like wood screws to go through our plywood into our two by twos. So we'll just have to put like a sticker or just paint over it. Um, but yeah, so I did on this side, haven't pocket hold screwed them in yet. Just repeating the process on the driver's side. Yeah, once these are in, it's gonna look pretty nice. Nice. And so yeah, then I gotta figure out how to trim this excess here. I'm not so worried about this, I could just flush cut with a router. But that side, I'm not really sure, because a lot of these framing pieces, especially these ones that we put the rib nuts in, it's curved. So we're gonna have to try to figure out how to address that. So, that'll be on our to-do list for next weekend, maybe. Okay. cut. So our whole board is 42 and a half inches. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start at the corners, go one and a quarter, one and a quarter, which leaves us at 40 inches in between there. And then a nice round number to divide that is by 10. So then you get four sections with three screws.
Oh, these are some nice pocket holes, huh? Wish I had thought about it for everything. Well, now we know. Can you drop? And now you know if you're watching this. Pocket hole from the beginning. Pocket hole everything. Yeah, well, it takes some planning. It's a problem. But if you're watching this. Invest in a Craig jig earlier. Yeah, it's pretty satisfying. It is. It's my favorite thing. Yeah, you just go. Hi, Bean. Are you in jail? Are you in jail? <laughs> Oh, Bailey. So our plan right now is to get the bump outs flush cut with our framing. That way we could put our quarter inch plywood paneling over it and it'll cover this edge. So right now we're going at it with this hexaw um, to basically get closer to where our final edge will be and then we'll follow it up with a router. Uh, we're using this approach because with the router, if we just tried to flush cut this, um, it would just create a bunch of sawdust and you'd have to be cutting through a bunch of material. So we're taking off a bunch with this and then we're going to finish it off with the router to flush cut. So leon has been holding up this quarter inch just scrap piece uh, to make sure that I'm getting close enough to our edge without going further than we need to. So it's just a little redundancy protection. Oh, this feels so loving. Dust. So I got the router out. I've been following our framing bits. After all this time, you gotta start doing that now? All right, fine, you explain it. Bailey, what's he doing? Router! <laughs> okay. So, I got the router out. It's got a flesh trim bit. And, um, yeah, basically it's just a little ball bearing that follows a guide. Um, so this is allowing me to pretty much cut exactly along where we want our final cut to be. Okay, sounds good. Does that sound good, Bailey? She's a little stinker. Does that sound good? Okay. <laughs> 